Extra, extra, read all about it. Here we are back again with breaking news, moments in the Bible where God had news to communicate through prophets. The prophet we will meet today is going to tell us something about how we worship God. Before we get into worship, let's review our memory verse this month. Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong. That's found in 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Got it memorized? Well, let's say it one more time. Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. You got it? Let's worship together. talk about how our actions and words sometimes don't match. Let's take a look at this fun little test that shows words that don't do what they should.
That was hard, wasn't it? We wanted to read the word instead of calling out the color. Sometimes what we say and what we do don't match, just like those words. Has anyone ever heard of fake news? This is news that isn't real or didn't happen. I'm gonna share a couple of stories with you. Some are real and some are fake. You have to spot the difference. If you think it's real, give a thumbs up. If you think it's fake, give a thumbs down. Okay, here's the first one. A chihuahua that can't walk befriends a bird that can't fly. Do you think that's real or do you think it's fake? You would be surprised to know that that is a real story. Okay, here's another one. A 12-year-old dog graduates from college. What do you think about that one? I don't know about you, but it smells a little fishy to me. Well, that is a big old fake story right there. All right, here's the next one. A man was arrested for using his phone while riding a horse. What do you think about that one? Have you ever ridden a horse? Well, if you have, don't use your phone because that is a very real story. Cold weather in Florida could really cause iguanas to fall from trees. Well, I don't take a lot of trips to Florida, but I will be looking out for that because that is a real story. Okay, here's the last one. A 10 month old baby becomes the first ever county sheriff. What do you think about that one? That would be really impressive if it was real, but it's not. <laughs> Those are all fake and real stories that sound really unbelievable. Well, so what? Why should this kind of stuff matter to God and why does it matter to us? Today, we're going to hear about a prophet named Amos. And not famous Amos, not those cookies, but they are good. Before he was known as a prophet, he was known as a sheep herder and a farmer. He was in a place called Judah, but preached in a place called Israel. Just like the prophet Micah we heard about last time, Amos had some breaking news for everyone. You see, God, through Amos, was letting the people know of Israel that they were not being sincere in their worship. God had noticed that they had forgotten how to worship God with their whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. They had forgotten to take care of each other and decided not to look out for those who needed help. Worship then and worship now has always been about more than saying all the right words to God. It's turning around and living out those right words each and every day in real and loving ways. And that's what it means to be sincere, real and loving. And you know what? That actually reminds me of this crazy embarrassing story. So this one time I was at camp and I slipped. We interrupt these activities to bring you some breaking news. This just in, this is Harrison with today's big idea that everyone needs to remember. When I worship God, I can be sincere. We now return to your regularly scheduled programming. Thank you. And believe me, I learned my lesson that day. I'll never try to wash my face with hot sauce and Doritos ever again. Man, I am glad I was able to get that off my chest. Thanks for keeping that bit of news to yourself. You know, looking at the time, I think it's time to check in with what happened to Carl on Grow TV. Let's check it out. This just in. My name is Carl, and you are my little chicken nuggets. And today, it's gonna be a great day. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends. Talk about Jesus and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. Hey there, kiddos. So glad you tuned in today. We have a lot to talk about. But first, I want to go over something that's very exciting. Do you know how many words there are out there? I mean, there's literally hundreds and thousands of words out there in the universe. And we don't even use half of them or even know about them. Don't believe me? Let's play a game called What's That Word? I'll read a word aloud, and you have to guess what it means. Ready? Let's get it. The first word is bum fuzzle. <laughs> bum. <laughs> bum. <laughs> okay, okay. This sounds like a word we would describe if we sat down on a chair too hard. Or maybe the funny last name of a football player. Let's see what it actually means. Bum fuzzle. To be flustered, confused, or perplexed. Ha! How cool is that? I get bum fuzzled all the time. Our next word is Gardilu. Man, that's a fun one. If I were to guess what this word was, I would say it's either a city in England, the feeling you get when you're picked first in a game, or the name of a group of flamingos. 
Let's see what Gardilu actually means. Gardilu is a Scottish phrase one would yell out the window before throwing their old slop out. Could you imagine just walking down the road and all of a sudden you hear Gardilu and you look up and you see four week old haggis and mashed potatoes. Gardilu is a Scottish phrase one would yell Yuck. out the window. All right, before Last throwing word. their old slop out. This word isn't as funny. What? I read it this That's morning. That's crazy. Crazy trying to figure out what it meant. The word is sincere. Sincere. Now when I first read it, I jumped back in my chair because I figured it had to be a bad word. Considering the word starts off with the word sin. You see, I don't know if this word is a good word, a bad word, or a funny word like bum fuzzle. I just don't know. Hey Carl. Hey Cassie. How's it going? Pretty good. What are y'all up to? Well, we're trying to figure out what this word means. What word, what word is that? Sincere. Because I'm 130% certain that it is a bad word. I can assure you, it's not. Cassie! It has the word sin in it. How do you explain that? Well, I guess I can't, but the word means to be honest and genuine. Could you use that in a sentence? All right. When Amos was talking in Amos chapter 5... Oh. I still don't get it. You see, in that time, Amos was a prophet, and the people of Israel weren't loving and worshiping God like they were supposed to. They weren't? How so? They probably thought they were worshiping God in the right way because they sang songs of praise and gave offerings to God. Uh, is that not worship? I mean, of course that's not. <clears throat> why don't you go ahead and explain to everybody why that would not be worship per se. Well, it is worship, but in their case, it wasn't real. The people in Amos' day would worship God and say how much they love God, but then their lives didn't show that they love God at all. Oh, I see what you mean. Because worship isn't about what we just say, it's about what we do. Yeah, exactly. When we say we love God in our worship, we have to back that up with our actions. That includes being kind to others and generally trying our best to live in a way that pleases God. Wow, so worship isn't just about what we do at church. It's about how we live our lives? Yep, and that's where the word sincere comes in. We show that we're sincere when what we say matches what we do. Being sincere sounds awesome. I'm gonna try to be more sincere with everyone. But the most important thing is, when I worship God, I can be sincere. Hey Carl, that's our big idea. <gasps> this just in, that's our big idea. Today's big idea is, when I worship God, I can be sincere. So let's say it all out loud on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. When I worship God, I can be sincere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I can be sincere, and so can you, and Cassie too. Sincere! Well, thanks for the help today, Cassie. No problem. I love having the chance to hang out with my favorite flibber tigibbet. Excuse me? You've never heard that word before? No. That's not a word, is it? It can't be. Is it? Flibber... Flibber tibbet? Flibber tibbet? Flibber tibbet? Flubber. Flubber tubby cup. Thanks for watching, Tip kids. See you next week. Flubber. Flubber tubby cup it. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Road TV. Have you ever pretended to like something but you really didn't? Or have you ever said or done something but then quickly changed your behavior when a parent or another grown up walked by? You know, it's fairly easy to act nice, right? But it's a whole different thing to actually be kind and caring. This is what Amos was talking about. When we pretend to be a certain way just so we won't get in trouble or so we can get compliments, that is not sincere. Remember, when I worship God, I can be sincere. When you pour food coloring into a bottle of water, it completely takes over the way the water looks. Check this out. You see, no matter which way you turn the bottle, it's the same color all the way through. This is what our worship to God must be like. We need to allow God to take over all of us and how we treat others is part of who we are too. You see, our worship can't just be halfway or even most of the way. We can't just do good things some of the time or only love certain people. We have to worship God with all that we have and in all that we do. And even though we're not perfect, this is what we're aiming for. The goal is 100%. Remember, when I worship God, I can be sincere. And since we're talking about breaking news this month, there is one fact about breaking news we must remember. No one ever seems to know when that news is going to happen. Did you know that Jesus' return is a lot like breaking news? 
we don't know when it's going to happen. So what does that have to do with our worship? You see, we don't want to be like the five women in the story who were not prepared for the bride's groom return. When Jesus returns someday, we want to have decided to follow Jesus already. While we wait for Jesus' return, we should practice worship by living a life that honors God. We practice that in the way we live, the way we talk, the way we think, and when we choose to be sincere in all of those things. Remember, when I worship God, I can be sincere. Well, now what? What does God want us to do about the things that we just learned? Well, how will you be sincere when you choose to worship this week? Will you choose to be kind? Will you help someone in need? Maybe someone needs help with a chore, or maybe someone you know needs a kind word. Think of a way that you can be sincere in your worship this week and put it on a sticky note. Put it in front of you so that you will always see it. You can either write it out or maybe even just draw a picture. Let's pray. God, thank you for your words that you gave the prophet Amos and for showing us that our worship must be sincere. Teach us how to let the things we do match the things that we say and help us to remember that we can worship you in small and big ways and anywhere that we are with everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, boys and girls. Let me tell you, I challenge you this week to find something you do to do it with all of your heart. Be sincere and find new and creative ways to worship God. Okay, all right, I'll see you guys later.